So I'm Lauren Kennedy. I'm the executive director of the Urban Art Commission. I am the strings that both Kyle and Cedar referenced, but I promise I'm not an ogre. So um, UAC manages public art all over town, and what that means is public art that is made specifically to live in the public domain. You're going to see that mostly represented in sculptures and murals all over the place, which, to Cedar's point, is mostly produced through a super community uh, specific co community committee driven process. I'm very nervous. Um, in the year, thank you. Ah. In the year that I've been in this job, I find that I have to talk a lot about why what we do is important and worth spending money on. And what I end up telling people sounds a lot like a, com a cotton commercial, but that um, when it's done right, public art is becomes a fabric of our lives. <laughs> um, it becomes the landmarks that we give directions by, the backgrounds of our uh, profile pictures. And more than that, it can drive growth and change. And so Dr. Maria Rosario Jackson at a symposium held by Rhodes recently talked about not how art, dri art drives economic growth, which it does, Ask Arts Memphis, but it's also a part of our quality of life. And our connection to it and our ability to access it is either empowering or disempowering. So I find that I'm drawn to programs um, that I'm seeing pop up around the country, like in Minneapolis, that are really uh, intentional about tying art across different sectors. So Minneapolis has embedded an artist in their city planning department, and they're now expanding that to include artists and to tackle issues like voter engagement and regulations around uh, rental properties. Uh, Meryl Lauterman ukuleles in uh, New York has been working with the sanitation department since the 70s to humanize sanitation workers and to help shed light and a different kind of understanding on an integral city process that we don't really consider. And in a similar vein, Calgary has uh, asked a, an artist group to work closely with their watershed department for several years now, verbatim, to uh, create a... a emotional connection between Calgary citizens and their watershed. That's part of their mission. Oh, Canada. Um, and, so, and then there are a ton of great examples, uh, like in LA, New York, Chicago, where there are dedicated art staff within transit systems. So I, you'll notice that I'm picking up on places where we're talking about a certain kind of functionality and marrying that to art. We have to think about the way people move through a transit stop, but we can also think about the aesthetics of that experience. Um, oh, now I don't know where my notes are. <laughs> so, oh, for heaven's sake. Yes, so these programs are not obvious examples of traditional public art, but I think that they're very much an extension of the work that I'm talking about. So we're asking um, us to consider systems and places that we already know in new ways, right? And I, yeah, I think that there are some great examples of, like, of this around Memphis where we're talking about cross-sector partnerships, but I think that they've been done in very one-off situations. So what happens if we're more intentional about it? about inviting art and artists into different situations, less obvious situations. And because we're not just talking about decorating a space, right? We're talking about how art is a powerful tool that we shape the world around us with. You're hearing that again and again tonight, I hope. Um, and <laughs> so I'm, I'm asking that we trust a little bit more, that we understand artists as creative problem solvers. To quote Dr. Jackson again, that we're thinking about arts participation and participating in cultural events in our city as a form of civic engagement. That we're trusting that even if we can't see that these things readily impact um, budget outcomes or statistics, that a person's experience moving through life is important and that the arts enrich that experience. I'm asking that we trust a different kind of process. Artists are total weirdos, but they, are, they, they work to create new things out of unrelated materials, and we need to trust them in that process. So what does it look like if we embed artists at MATA and FedEx and the public library system? If we give them room and resources to do what they do and to help us connect to the people and organizations making decisions about our lives? If you've ever been to City Hall, you will appreciate that there's room for aesthetic improvement. <laughs> I 
I, I'm thinking that we need to, um, urban art is uh, in a unique place to help make these connections and that I hope that we're a part of widening access to the arts and creating new context to experience it in. So I'm gonna keep working on that tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.